Hello everyone, we are at Streets of Willow at Willow Springs International Raceway where we are testing the latest RS Future project, this S2 Lotus Elise. Uh, it is a car that I've always wanted. It's been a dream car, bucket list car, basically since I was in college. And I was on Lotus Talk late at night and throwing out offers I shouldn't have been throwing out. And uh, this one was too good of a deal to refuse. So we drove out to Vegas yesterday, picked it up, and naturally the first thing we did was bring it to the track uh, to see what it can do. Our good friend Peter Robinson uh, is hosting a track day for his birthday today and invited us out. So we're gonna do some baseline laps, see what it'll do. Uh, I'm fully anticipating there being some things that I love about the car and some things that I hate about the car. On the way here, the typical Lotus things were noticeable, like the shifter being terrible. Uh, second only to the air-cooled Porsche 911 shifter, which is unrivaled in how garbage it is. Uh, but other than that, the car is really fun to drive. Uh, surprisingly, not that annoying to drive on the street. It's pretty mild. And it's going to fill the void that Mui and I had, which was uh, having a car that we can keep at home, hop in, drive to the track, drive home, uh, fairly easy, no trailers, nothing annoying. Uh, just a fun street car that uh, is also capable on track. So we're going to go out, do some baseline laps, see what it'll do, and figure out what exactly we need to replace to get it where we want it. So yeah, let's go do some laps. That's Peter's 600 LT. He uh, rents the track for everyone on his birthday and basically invites all of his friends out to drive. Uh, one of the coolest guys I've ever met and very fast, uh, a gentleman that I've coached for a while now. Uh, so this is his track day that we're at. This is also Peter's M5, he brings both of them to the track. It's kind of like the perfect daily driver. I'm sure she's thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> it's ethanol, right? No, not. I'm from 91. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, if you were to switch this thing to E85, you'd need to bring twice as many. I know. I, I want to, but that's what I'm afraid of. Yeah. It's like you can never bring enough fuel. <laughs> hey, Lester. Hi, Yogi. 
You guys having fun? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you were looking like you were getting the most out of the 600. So we've both had a chance to get a few laps in, and I would say that the car is exactly what we expected. Um, it is an absolute blast. Uh, it has left us wanting to put in a lot more laps. Uh, if it weren't for the fact that we basically got the car yesterday and have not even looked at it, we would do a ton more. But we both probably did about five, six laps each, just enough to kind of get the feel for it and to quickly figure out what its strengths and weaknesses were. Uh, some of the strengths, the steering is excellent. Uh, it's a ton of fun to drive. It's a momentum car, which means that it's just an enjoyable experience overall throughout the entire lap. You really have to work for the lap time. Uh, and I would say how light it is, you really do feel it. Some of the weaknesses, the shifter, first and foremost, and the transmission, uh, both are terrible. Uh, the shifter will be an easy fix. I'll probably just replace it with an aftermarket shifter and uh, that should solve the vagueness. You know, you shift and sometimes third is here, sometimes third's here. You put it in gear and it moves around kind of everywhere. Uh, incredibly loose and does not feel good whatsoever. Uh, also very easy to miss a shift. So that's gotta go. And then the second thing was the brakes. Uh, as expected, bringing a car from some private party random person that has doesn't really track it and then taking it out on track the brakes essentially didn't break uh, they either locked or didn't really want to stop so we drove the car rather conservatively because of that luckily that's an easy fix we're going to put on some winmax w5s and that'll give us the brake friction we need and also the modulation which is big on these cars so uh, you don't want to break the a brake pad that's just going to instantly lock it up winmax uh, pads are really good for that we run a w4 on movies car which is a question i get all the time and that transformed the modulation so this one will try w5 if it's too much we'll go to a w4 um, and then obviously change fluid and most likely lines if it doesn't already have stainless lines i haven't had a chance to go through the car uh, and most importantly Put it up, make sure that it's safe, uh, give it a once over, nut and bolt everything. The car felt good, solid. It made the drive back from Vegas pretty easily, so we expected it to be fine. But we don't wanna to put too many laps until we do all of that and then also replace the oil pan. So oddly enough, the 1ZZ that comes in the MRS has a baffled pan. The 2ZZ, which comes in the Celica and the Lotus, uh, does not have a baffled pan. So oil starvation is fairly common in them. And I've known a couple of guys that have blown them up because of that. So we didn't wanna risk it. Put in a few laps at Streets of Willow, have some fun, see what we need to fix, get that fixed, and then return with uh, a much better platform. So I think the lap ended up with like a 129.0, which uh, isn't surprising. It is slow, uh, but we really weren't pushing it too hard because of the brakes, the tires were garbage, and it was like 95 degrees. So of course I have to have my excuses, uh, but when we come back, it's gonna be a lot faster. Fix all of those issues, get a nice morning lap and see what it can do. I'm really excited because I think with uh, a bit of work, this thing can be really quick uh, around a racetrack. It is slow in a straight line. So I guess, yeah, that's one weakness I didn't mention. It's terribly slow. Uh, the horsepower, I think is like 170, 180, something like that from the factory. And you can tell in a straight line, it's definitely slower than Mui ZK. Uh, probably faster than a Miata, obviously, but uh, nothing impressive, so. Get all those things sorted out and bring it back and then really start to get a, I'd say a stage one, phase one baseline of what it can do and go a little faster. So ton of fun. If you're thinking about getting one, I'd recommend it. Uh, I'm super happy to have it. And it definitely uh, is, it scratched the itch that we were having for a car that, you know, in this, uh, to fill this void. So excited and looking forward to uh, what the future holds for it. And uh, because I've gotten the question quite a few times, what's going on with the NSX? 
it is back from the body shop. It's getting ready for the next round of testing and that thing will be ready for GTA finals in no time.